OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. I am uh, so excited to be here with you today. My name is Paul Young. I'm from uh, LAUSD, the Division of Adult and Career Education. I was Oh, hold on a second. I forgot I need to put on my first slide while I talk. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I was a developer of the original Moodle version of PTW1, that is putting English to work one, a beginning low ESL course on Moodle, and uh, which has been very popular with adult ESL students in California for more than a decade now. As OTAN transitions from Moodle to Canvas, I'm helping to adapt the series to the new learning management system. I need to confess that I too am new to Canvas and am learning as I go. In the course of this journey, I am hoping to gain insights and contributions from those of you who are more experienced and knowledgeable about Canvas. And together by sharing ideas and best practices, we will produce an interactive online beginning low ESL course that advances equity among our students and improves their learning outcomes. The PTW1 on Canvas project is part of the California Distance Learning Cooperative. As I mentioned, it's a work in progress upon its official release, possibly over the summer, uh, definitely by fall. The course will be free for all California agencies that use the Canvas learning management system. This is what we're gonna do today. I wanna share with you what I have accomplished so far in migrating, putting English to Work One from Moodle to Canvas. You will see the exciting variety of interactive activities. You will have the opportunity to ask questions. More importantly, from the developer side, I will get to ask you for your perspective from the field on what might work better for students. And finally, I will entreat you to join me in the beta testing of this course with your class and students. Before we go any further, I wanna hear from you. Uh, Take a minute or two and introduce yourself in the chat. Write your name and your agency, any experience you have with uh, putting English to work one, whether it's through distance learning, uh, Moodle, or the old uh, video and workbooks in your classroom, and any ca Canvas experience you might have. Okay, and just keep it simple, you know? And uh, that way, knowing my audience will help me better target this presentation. Okay, so uh, take a minute and uh, introduce yourself in, in the chat, okay? Okay, great. Uh, Jamie, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly, and I, I really appreciate some Canvas uh, veterans here, uh, and, and I'm, I'm sure De Debbie does as well. <laughs> Okay, Sean, thanks for joining us. Uh, new to Canvas, all right. Uh, hope you have some uh, putting English to work experience. Oh, oh, Penny's here, oh, great. <laughs> now I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm happy to have Penny here. Okay, Eileen. Don't be nervous. <laughs> oh, San Leandro, oh, great. Eileen, just want you to know I grew up in Oakland and uh, I, I, I go to San Leandro all the time. Uh, but no, uh, some Moodle experience, but no Canvas. Okay, great, all right. Uh, I'll just uh, hang out for a little bit. Oh, grew up in Berkeley. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. Uh, I, don't tell me, Jamie, you went to Cal because I, I did. I, I grew up uh, uh, as a teenager going to uh, Rasputin's and Tower Records and Telegraph and eventually ended up at Cal too. So, all right. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> you see Santa Barbara. Okay. Just as good. Just as good. Okay, all right, thank you, thank you everyone. That's, it's so great to see such a, a, a dynamic, dynamic, accomplished uh, uh, crew here uh, in this session. So um, today's agenda, we're gonna look at the PTW1 course layout in Canvas from the student's point of view. We'll go over the variety of innovative exercises from the usual multiple choice and fill in the blanks to new interactive videos, 
dictations, and puzzles. The good news is that the large variety of the, the, the large majority of the quizzes is automatically graded by the learning management system. Yay, that means less work for you, okay? We'll learn to recognize which exercises requires the teachers to grade, and I'll explain why that's necessary, okay? Along the way, I'm gonna ask you a few questions because at this stage, it will be helpful for me to know what you as teachers think and your input will be helpful as I continue to fine tune things before our big rollout, okay? Finally, I'm gonna talk about beta testing, okay? And uh, I would like you to consider participating and experimenting with me on this great project, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna switch my uh, share screen to my Canvas page, which is right here, okay? So this is my Canvas page and uh, it's, it's my dashboard and it's the, it's the developer's view. As a teacher, you're gonna have a different uh, view and that won't be a problem. They're all quite similar. But on my dashboard, I have Paul's PTWS sandbox and new PTW1 build. And this is where I'm sketching out the entire course, okay? Here on the left column, there are many options. And like I said, I'm a developer, you'll be a teacher, you might not have all these options. And that's a good thing, by the way, <laughs> because you know these things can get overwhelming. Uh, but you will have a chance to customize, you know, uh, things in the course that will, to suit your needs. And I'm gonna switch right now to the student view to show you what I'm talking about. I have a student view button up here on the upper right and I'm gonna click on that. And this is what the student will see. As you can see, great, a lot fewer options. And my temporary placeholder uh, images here with uh, temporary placeholder text. This you can customize. You'll be able to put whatever picture you want here and whatever welcome text uh, and summary of the course you would like here. And the syllabus here on the left will also uh, is also customizable to your needs. Okay, here's a, a little page for announcements you might want to make to your students, a connection to your Google Drive and a page for your scheduled Zoom meetings and, uh, and link, and any badges you might wanna award to your uh, students who are completing or, or making uh, you know, regular advances to the, the 20 units of the course, okay? So where is the content you're asking? It's right here under modules, okay? If I click on modules, this is what the students uh, will be doing going to modules as soon as they log in. And it's taking a second to load. If I, I scroll down, you can see that there, the, there are 20 units to this entire course with uh, video episodes and workbook exercises that have been translated into this online course. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the top. And the first unit I see is, uh, what's your name? If I troll down the arrow, the contents of the unit are displayed in order. Okay, so let's just click through this, okay? Uh, episode one is right here. If I click on that. Paul, we have a request. Is it possible for you to enlarge the screen, please? Oh, uh, how's this? Is this better? That looks good to me. How about Sean? Is that good? Yes, thank you. Okay. okay, great. Thank you guys for speaking out. You know, I'm, we're, we're all in our little cocoon here, right? So if, uh, if I'm doing something that, you know, that uh, doesn't come across, please don't hesitate to let me know or Debbie and Debbie will uh, inform me. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Sean. So here, uh, episode one, you can see the, the watch episode one link. There's a quick synopsis of the story of this video episode, a summary of the life skills that are are covered as well as the grammar, okay? And this is a snapshot from the student workbook if you're familiar with it, okay? So if I click on watch episode one, it's gonna launch in a separate window, 
and it's right here. Uh, the the video plays oh, almost instantly. The streaming is very efficient and fast. There's also a full screen button it, uh, on the lower right corner. This has filled up my screen. Hello, I'm Liz Chan. In this television series... So, uh, as you can see, the, the video quality is, is, although not high definition, is quite good and very acceptable for our students to study English with. And on the lower right corner, there's a gear button. If I click on that, okay, you won't be able to see this because I have my, my screen is actually a, a, a 4K, you know, that, which means it's, it's twice the, the definition of high uh, of a high definition screen. Okay, so it's a four k screen. So uh, the, the the pixels will, will, will be much smaller here. And but there's a there's a closed caption button. If I choose English, uh, you will be able to see. You won't you won't be able to see it unfortunately. But closed captioning appears on the top of the screen, and you, and that's something that you can uh, show your students that they they have a they have an option to watch this uh, program with the with the English subtitles on, okay, for assistance. So uh, one advantage of having the, the video open in a separate window is that, you know, your students can keep the video open at all times while they are working their way. I'm, I'm gonna click on modules now to go back to the, uh, the contents of the course. They can keep that video open and as a reference while they're working through the course and its exercises. Okay, so uh, from episode one, I went back to modules to come to this main menu and I'm gonna go to the first exercise, you know, one vocabulary. Okay, so this is a very uh, nice visual uh, drag and drop exercise. Students click on the vocabulary and they get to move things around. Okay, so it's very tactile and uh, and it's fun, you know, it's not like you have to type, you know, for a level one students, they have to type right into a, a small box with their first exercise. They get to, you know, move things around and in a very fun and interactive way. So let, let me try to finish this really quickly and see how uh, this works. The pen, pencil, and the board. Okay, sit, submit, and I get all the items correct. If I make an error, the students can do this as many times as she needs to improve her grade. Okay, so there's a unlimited, unlimited number of times a student can com, uh, complete this exercise. So to proceed, I have two choices. I can go back to modules, and go back to the main menu where I see my uh, exercises listed in order, or I can click the next button here on the lower right corner. I hope you're able to see that. I will click this next button. And it's taking me to a, the next exercise, which is, uh, it's your turn. And it's a video. Look at the alphabet page in your book. Work on your book at home. Watch and listen. Look at the alphabet on your paper. When I say a letter, point to the letter on your paper. Point to the letter you hear. Let's spell this word. P-E-N. It's a... Pen. So the video stops and, and, and there's a prompt to, to, uh, to identify this vocabulary word. So I'm going to drag this uh, pen into the box and click check. And if I did not get that correctly, I would have a chance to, to reach, retry that. 
Okay, I got it correct, so I'm gonna choose continue. Yes, Miguel, it's a pen. And here on the bottom where you see these uh, circles uh, on the timeline, that's where the next exercises are. So I'm just gonna skip for the sake of convenience. I'm gonna skip to the next one and hit play. It's a book. book, book. book. So I'm gonna choose, what happens if I choose the wrong uh, answer? Retry, I get to try it again, check again, and then move on. Yes, okay, here's a long word. You are students. Yep. Oops, I got that wrong. I'm gonna click retry and check again. Yep, and I'm your T E A C uh, your teacher. Okay. That's right, Lana. So one thing you have to remember uh, with these interactive videos is that at the end of it, you have the student has to click the submit answer button in order for the canvas to uh, accept the score. Okay, so I'm going to click submit answers. And it says attempt successfully submitted. Okay, if I ever want to check my grades, your student would simply click on grades here. What was this? This was unit one, it's your turn. So let's go to grades and look for that. Okay, unit one, it's your turn. Sometimes Canvas takes a, a few more seconds than you would like for it, for things to load, but it's, it, it'll come soon. So here we go. So the vocabulary uh, we just did here, and it's your turn is here. So. I got four out of four with it's your turn and 12 out of 12 with the vocabulary exercises. And I'm going to go back to modules and continue where I left off. Okay. R remember, modules is the menu of your entire uh, unit. Okay. So let's look at the alphabet. So here's a video. That's the alphabet 26 letters. Each letter is very important. Watch and listen. Yo. A, B, C, D. Okay, so the student will, you know, uh, rap <laughs> along with the alphabet rap here. And at the very bottom, the student has a prompt. Okay, record yourself reading the English alphabet. Click the record button below to start. Click done when you're finished. Okay, so let's try that. A. B, C, D, and I'm gonna click done. Okay, so this exercise is not uh, graded. Uh, it's simply for the student to practice that, you know, she can record her own voice and listen to it and have the, the option to download it, okay? Or, or just listen to it. A, B, C. As soon as I navigate away from this exercise, um, we're gonna lose that recording, okay? the uh, so just keep that in mind whenever you see a recording exercise like that. It's just more for a student to practice temporarily. Uh, once, once you navigate away, the system does not save the exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue by clicking the next button on the lower right corner. And here we have an arrange the letters of the alphabet exercise. And there's a instruction here, it says, Put the letters of the alphabet in the correct order. Start from the left side of the top row. So uh, I'm just going to make this one a little bit smaller. Uh, there you go. Okay. So what 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 the student has to do is put the alphabet in order, starting from the left. So it's going to be A, I always get nervous doing this in front of a, an audience. You know, so I, I can't find my letters. So, and what happens is that. Uh, you know, you can you can check your answers and see what you've gotten correct and resume. That means pick up where you left off without uh, having to start all over again. So resume. Let's see. Let's see if it maintains the first row of letters uh, as I've placed them. So Paul, yes, we we have a couple of questions. Sure. Where are you getting these exercises from Lola? And then Jamie is asking, is this course available for educators to use with students? 
I'm going to get to that. Okay. Jamie, hang on. Remember, you're going to have a chance to beta test this with your students. Okay. And I'll explain that uh, later on. Uh, wh where did I get these exercises? Uh, well, uh, is Penny still here? No. Okay. Well, we made them uh, with a with an app called H5P, and we've uh, imported them into Canvas. Okay, and like I said, uh, when when they when the program launches, uh, hopefully uh, this summer, but definitely no later by the fall, it's going to be free to all the schools who use uh, Canvas. Okay, so uh, save those questions for later. Uh, 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 and let me let me continue so we can get through uh, all the exercises because I, I I realize that I only have about thirty minutes left okay and and much more to show so but 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 don't let me uh, deter you from asking questions okay I, I just feel confident that I can answer these two questions better later okay so next in the lower right corner to continue and here's a a, a flashcard exercise what is this book. Check, correct. Next one, pencil, check, and correct. And uh, this is another fun visual exercise that our students will enjoy, okay? And um, once a student uh, goes through all of these flashcards, you can see here, there are 10 of them. And if not all of them are correct, the student can uh, try again as many times as uh, uh, the student wants to get a perfect score. Okay, so I'm gonna click next on the lower right corner. And here's another interactive video. I can tell because there's a video and there are uh, these little circles on the timeline. Okay, so let's watch this uh, video. Excuse me, can I have more water please? So, the video plays twice. The student watches it the first time, and then the second time, the student is prompted with questions, okay? Excuse me, can I have more water, please? I'm gonna try water and check. Oh, great, continue. Oh, and how about some coffee and some of Lucy's pumpkin pie heated with ice cream? Okay. Uh, Oh no, got that wrong. Retry, and it tells me what the correct answer is. So I'm going to retry and choose the other one. Yeah, in this case, you know, there's just either it's either going to be one or the other, right? But when you have more than two uh, choices, that that's helpful. Okay, so let's check that. Good. Your waitress will bring your pie right out. Thank you, Miguel. You work hard. You do a very good job. Thanks, boss. And the cool thing is it plays full screen on your computer. OK, the, the exercise is, is, uh, is it, 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 it uh, scales uh, nicely. OK, so Miguel is a good worker, right? But you need to learn more English. With more English, you could be a waiter, make more money. I, I, I understand. English classes are free at the adult school. You can start tonight. Adult school. Tonight. Yes, tonight. Okay, so don't forget with these interactive exercises, videos, you have to click submit answers at the end, okay? Uh, look, your answers have been submitted. Great, okay, so uh, we're gonna move on by clicking the next uh, button at the lower right corner of the screen. So here's a here's a, a ordering, a sequencing exercise, right? Put the conversation in the correct order. Uh, you, you drag these things up and down. Okay, so remember, this is a very basic level one uh, unit, the very first of the entire course. So uh, it's gonna be, uh, my name is Marta Lopez. What's your name? My name is John Franklin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, right? I, th I think that's correct. Let's, let's submit. Oh, great. Okay, I, I got it all correct. As you can see, there's a great 
variety of exercises, right? That the students will engage in and find very uh, stimulating. Okay, so here's something that's very traditional, right? Uh, fill in the blanks. Okay, so um, look what happens if you get you get the, the answers all wrong. I'm gonna submit and it's telling me that I, I got them all wrong. And if I should say shoot, show solution, it gives me the answers. Okay, so that I could uh, retry it with the correct answers. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What's your first name? It is, it is, my name is, and submit. And the student can do this as many times as she needs to get uh, the, 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 the best score possible, okay? So I'm gonna click on this next button here on the lower right. And here, you know, the majority of these exercises are straight out of the book, and we just, you know, tailored them and adapted them to uh, the learning management system. You know, it, uh, before it was Moodle, and now we're upgrading it to uh, Canvas. And this page is right out of the book. If it's hard to see, you can always click this full screen button, and uh, it, it fills the screen nicely. And this, the student can navigate at the bottom of this page with this arrow. Uh, complete the sentence with is or is not it it is a pen it is not a book check that's great and what if the student is wrong you click the eyeball here it, it reviews the correct answers and the student can retry okay and so this is what this looks like It is a calendar, it is not a chair. And uh, sometimes like with the videos, you have to click that, uh, there's a, a, a card at the very end, right? With a list of the, the questions and you click the submit answers text on top. And other times you get this, this uh, notice. So after a while, you know, you'll have to get used to uh, when students have to do what, <laughs> okay? And uh, and that's probably the, the trickiest part of this, right? Okay, so I'm gonna click the next button and it's a, a similar kind of thing, okay? So this, this is multiple choice, right? There's a variety in this one actually. It's multiple choice and uh, yes, they are, check. Oh no, oh, no, they're not, okay, not notebooks. So I'm gonna click the eyeball and it's gonna give me a chance to retry, okay? No, they're not. Okay. So, and here, write the short answer. Okay. So it's looking for, uh, because if, if we go back to the, the, the scaffolding, we're, we're being taught the short answers here. Yes, you are. No, no, you're not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. So it's looking for that. Okay. So, is it a clock? Yes, it is. Okay. And again, if, if I don't get this correctly, I get the eyeball, which will review the correct answer and the student will have a chance to redo. Okay. Okay, and then confirm, confirm submits it. Okay, and here there's no submit button, unlike the in the interactive videos, right? So let's move on. Uh, next here on the lower right. Hey, there's a crossword puzzle, right? Isn't this cool? So uh, across two, it says my blank is 14502 green. So I think that it's probably gonna be my address, right? So I'm gonna type address. Oh, and that fit. My, what does that say? Uh, phone number maybe? Oh my God, this is really long. So it can't be phone number. It must be telephone number, right? Telephone, right? So, uh, here we have a, a crossword puzzle, okay? So again, I just can't emphasize this enough that the variety of exercises, engaging exercises will keep your students uh, interested and motivated to persist, okay? So I'm gonna click uh, next on the lower right corner. As you can see here on grades, I have six items already that I've completed, right? Okay, and uh, so uh, if I want to check, I can, all right? So here, there's a little uh, 
instruction here says, click, push to speak and read the sentence and questions you see. Read the sentences and question, start course. Okay, this is kind of cool. Okay, this is a, so I'm, I wonder, I have to read this, okay? But first I want to click uh, push to speak. How are you? It's telling me I got that correct. What is your name? Oh, I, I <laughs> my bad, I forgot to uh, click push to speak. What is your name? What is your phone number? As you can see, I'm trying out different sort of intonation and, and it's, it's, uh, the, the program is, is sharp enough to, to, to tag it as uh, correct. What is your address? Where are you from? I am, see, I, I, there was too much pause between words, so it, it, it thought I ended, but I can retry that. I am a student. Wow, that's, that's impressive, right? So there, there's a couple more, I, I, I won't uh, bore you. you you're probably uh, uh, mocking me right now <laughs> for, for my pronunciation, which I don't blame you for if you are. Okay, so that's how that works. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, right? Uh, basically, it's, it's a kind of, uh, you know, a, a basic speaking lesson, you know, with a recording and I, I, I'm guessing some very rudimentary artificial intelligence going on under the programming there, okay? So uh, this is a little uh, sign, a little precursor of what, of things to come in the, in the, in the, in the future of what uh, these programs will be able to do. And, and that's quite exciting, okay? So I'm gonna click the next button on the lower right corner here. And this is your typical, you know, multiple choice, right? You, 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 the student has to read this registration form and then just choose what is the teacher's name. Uh, it's uh, uh, Frank. Okay, so here, uh, remember the the tricky thing that that you'll the trickiest thing you'll have to learn about this is how uh, answers are submitted for grading in the variety of exercises, right? When you see items like this, when you click check that submits that not only checks whether this is correct or not but it submits this one question for grading uh as, as you'll see here uh unlike moodle um and and if i choose the wrong i, I get a chance to i get a chance to redo this unlike moodle you know there's no uh, submit answer button for the entire thing at the end, right? If you, if those of you who are who are uh, familiar with Moodle, it's, it's like submit, submit all, and finish, and then submit again. There's like three submit buttons that you have to do to to finalize an exercise like this. But with uh, this H5P on Canvas, each item that you check is actually submitting. The, the question for, for grading, okay? So I'm gonna proceed by clicking the next button on the lower right corner. And here, uh, this, I don't know if you can tell, but this looks a little bit different. And it says right here, your, your teacher will grade this exercise after you've completed the unit. There's a little uh, visual prompt here, the mother, talking to the child with uh, dialogue bubbles. And it says resume quiz, because I've, I've been here before as, as a student. And uh, as you, the mother asked the, the child, you know, uh, what, what is in your backpack? And then the student is prompted to answer the same question here. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I have a pen and eraser and two books. Okay, so I'm gonna submit this quiz. And this is one of those things where it's gonna be here as attempt number one. And right now there's a, it's, it's, the score is zero out of 10 because uh, 
this is one of those exercises that you, the teacher, will have to uh, grade, okay? Because obviously the, the, the choices that a student might type into this box to answer that question are, are infinite, right? Like I have a pencil, I don't have anything, you know? So uh, this is one of those exercises where we can't pre-program in the, the correct answers. These are the ones that you will have to, um, you know, uh, pay attention to and assign a grade to. Okay, and you will also be able to leave comments for your students too. Okay, so I'm going to continue with next. And this is a dictation. You, know, you, you can tell by these speaker icons that there's audio here. So I'm going to click on this one. I am a student. So what does that say? I am a student. The teacher is in the classroom. So this is a. Uh, These sentences are going to be case uh, sensitive. So uh, the books are on the table. Let's try one where I, I, I forget to capitalize the first letter. The books are on the table. And, and my telephone number is 213-456-9873. OK, I, I, I want to attempt that one right now. <laughs> OK, submit show solution okay so it's telling me that see i did not capitalize the the therefore the is the t there were the is not correct and i missed all these items here okay and i could i could retry okay so that's pretty cool right there's a dictation exercise all right again i just can't emphasize this enough the, the variety will of uh activities will keep your students engaged okay so next, okay, so here's a, here's a little, uh, you know, quick random uh, check, you know, for comprehension, okay? This is choose the correct sentence, uh, okay. And, and it just shuffles automatically. The student doesn't have to do anything to advance the next question. Okay, and this, uh, uh, again, you know, you have to, this one, the answers are submitted automatically. You don't have to uh, click a final submit or check button, okay? So narrative reading, okay? When you see this take the quiz, it's, it's going to be a native, it's like the writing exercise earlier, what's in your backpack, it's going to be a native uh, canvas exercise, not uh, <clears throat> from H5P. And this is uh, directly out of the book, okay? There's, a, there's a, a story here, it's a reading comprehension exercise, and I'm gonna play the audio that accompanies it. Unit one, exercise 15. Carlos Nunez is a student. Carlos Nunez is a student at Main Street Adult School. He's in an English class. His teacher is Mr. Edwards. Carlos's friends are Maria and Louise. Okay, so a um, couple of questions here, and here's something you have to remember. This is right out of the book. This is uh, directly from uh, the Moodle version that we created many years ago, okay? so. Uh, it says, answer the following questions with complete sentences. Okay, so if I just say, what is Carlos's last name? If I just say uh, Nunez, you know, which uh, content wise is correct, right? But then it's not a correct sentence. It's going to be wrong. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay. So it's, it's, it's incorrect, but When we created the Moodle exercise many years ago, for these sort of uh, uh, questions where we're asking students to write the correct question, and we wanted to create a scenario where teachers didn't have to uh, check everything all the time, 
we plugged in a variety of answers that we thought students might answer with, you know, to as much as we can make the whole system, you know, automatic and, and seamless, you know. So uh, when a student gets the wrong answer in these type of exercises where they're supposed to write a correct, complete sentence, they're going to get these options. Okay, for example, what is Carlos's last name? What do we uh, program in? His last name is Nunez. Let me make that bigger for you, okay? His last name is Nunez. Carlos's last name is Nunez. It's Nunez. It is Nunez. Nunez is his last name. Um, what is his teacher's name? Uh, his teacher's name is Mr. Edwards. His name is Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards is his name. It's Mr. Edwards. It is Mr. Edwards. So that was, uh, you know, very, very tedious for the developers, but the teachers really appreciated it, you know, so, so keep that in mind, you know, so there'll be a, a couple of exercises like this, okay, probably just one, one in each unit, and that is the narrative reading, okay, so the cool thing about the narrative reading is that it comes with the audio, the students could hear the story read to them, and they could also practice pronunciation, for example, you can teach them to do this. Unit one, exercise 15. Carlos Nunez is a student. Carlos Nunez is a student. Carlos Nunez is a student at Main Street Adult School. Carlos Nunez is a student at Main Street Adult School. He's in an English class. He's in an English class. So the student can practice, you know, pronunciation. And I don't know about uh, how other teachers do it, but I highly recommend this, right? Because uh, it's, it's a side-by-side -side practice. They get to uh, emulate the pronunciation, the articulation, the rhythm of the syntax. Okay, it's just so valuable. It just really contributes to, to fluency. And they, they have the option of, of downloading this audio track. Oh, it's expired. So this is something I'm gonna make a note of right now and investigate. It says expired token here. I don't, I don't know if you can see that. I'll have to talk to Canvas about that, but but we want the students to be able to download this audio track and just just keep it on their MP3 file and something that they can practice on the go when they're you know taking the bus to work or uh, you know doing the laundry at the at the laundromat. Okay, so that's how this works. There's a variety of, of uh, answers that we we plugged in, uh, hoping that uh, it'll it'll help the teachers. Um, okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, I have an option to take the quiz again. Let me see what happens here. There's there's no uh, next button here, right? So I'm, I'm gonna have to go back to modules after this, right? So I'm gonna go to modules, click okay. Usually when you're in a, that student test mode, which is what that is, it, it's, it takes a little while to, to bounce back and forth. Okay, so that was narrative reading, right? We're approaching the end, okay? So now I'm gonna click on what's your name, okay? And this is one of the ones that when you see take the quiz, it's a native Canvas exercise that was imported from Moodle, okay? So as you can see this prompt, your, your, your teacher will grade this exercise after you completed the unit. So answer these questions with your information, right? So this is gonna look familiar. Students have to uh, type in, you know, their own answer. What is your name? My name is uh, Juan Carlos Gonzalez. Okay, what is the name of your school? Uh, Los Angeles Adult School. Okay, and the, t the student will submit the quiz. It'll be saved. And you, the teacher, will, will have to come and uh, look at it and assign uh, the, the the, the relevant points, okay? So, oh, we have a question. Yes. How long is the course? How many hours to finish on average? Okay, so there are 20 units, 20 units, you know, and you can see each unit is quite uh, substantive, okay? And uh, the, the standard has been that uh, uh, this has always been a distance learning course mostly, but in the past, couple of years, some teachers have begun using it in their classrooms. But as a distance learning course, students earn 10 hours of attendance by completing the entire course and uh, uh, scoring 80% or better on the unit test. Okay, and here is the unit test. 
okay? So this is the last one, okay? This is right out of the original book. Um, my name is Marta Ortega. Check. What is the last name? I'm just gonna click through this because I wanna show you something. Okay, because this is the unit test, if the student makes a mistake, they're not gonna get the correct answer. There's no eyeball here to reveal the correct answer, no show option button. They can click this uh, arrow to, re to clear and retry, but they're, they're not gonna get the uh, correct answer because it's a unit test, okay? So that's, that's one difference here, okay? And let me just see what happens. How do we submit at the end? Okay, because uh, as you recall, submitting for a grade is is is, is different for every uh, different class of. Uh, I have to think about what I'm doing here. Okay, oh that's good. Okay, so uh, he is a teacher. I just want to see how. Uh, Oh, so here's, a, an, here's another different kind of exercise, right? Where students can move words around and place them to match the, uh, the verb to be with the subject pronoun. Okay, hope I got this right. Check. Okay, so you get this, uh, this prompt to confirm. Okay, that's how that works, okay? So if I click, because if you recall, this is the last, the unit test is always the last item, okay, in, in the course. So if I were to click next right now, it would take me to the first page of episode two, and I can watch the video here, right? And I can see a, a synopsis of the story. Miguel makes plans to study with his classmate Jane and a summary of the life skills and grammar in this unit. And this is a, a picture of the original page one cover page of the workbook. Okay, so uh, that's, that's it for my demo now. And uh, I, I'm, I can answer any questions you might have before I go on to my next thing about the beta test. So anybody have a question, you can feel free to unmute and, and ask me directly. Hi, Paul, it's Jamie from Tam Adult School. Um, so what I heard you say was there was 20 modules um, and they get, when they successfully go through them and you know get in the 80 percentile, there, they get 10 hours of class instruction. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And do you think it takes some students less time or more time? What are your, I'm assuming this is for like the very first level of ESL. It, it is the first level and it's gonna be different for everybody uh, to, to be honest. And uh, you know, what, what is gonna happen is that, and, and every unit is not exactly the same length. You know, so some units will be shorter and some will be longer, but so it's a general ballpark you know, the, the 10 hour assignment. And it's something that we've, we've worked out with the OTAN and uh, uh, the adult ed office as a CDE from, from the very inception of this course. Okay, so it's, it's a standard that is used across the state, regardless of which, for distance learning, regardless of which agency you're from, that basically we're assigning 10 units, I mean, 10 hours of attendance per unit upon completion. Okay, completion- oh, per unit, not per course. No, oh, yeah. I thought, yeah, okay, so it's really more like 10 times 20, 200 hours. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, I, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood you, okay, so. Oh, okay, uh, that made me feel better, I was like, 20 units, 10 <laughs> hours, wow, okay, thank you, got it. Right, the course is uh, is called Putting Each to Work One, it has 20 units. Each unit is comprised of, a, you know, a 25 to 28 minute video, and, you know, all the uh, accompanying uh, corresponding exercises that you just saw. Okay, uh, did that answer your question? Definitely, thank you. 
Uh, Paul, I have a question. I'm Susan from um, Contra Costa County, both Martinez and Mount Diablo adult. Um, I noticed at the bottom you had badges. Can you tell me more about um, the badge piece of this? Okay, so uh, thank you for your question, Susan. Uh, I haven't gotten that far yet myself. And no. that's, something, that's something I'm sure uh, the teachers can figure out, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I'm not an expert at Canvas, uh, but as we work together and start beta testing this, hopefully, I hopefully, hope, hopefully you'll join me. You know, I, we we definitely want a beta test, and I know that Marin and I at Mount Diablo Adult Education are interested in the badges piece. So yeah, we want a beta test so we can figure out the badges. <laughs> and I just want to say that I, I love Contra Costa County. I, I, did, I, did I mention that I grew up in Oakland? <laughs> no, that's a different county. <laughs> you know, I used to take the Caldecott Tunnel uh, through, through the mountain to go to, to go to Walnut Creek. And so yes, I, exactly. I am thrilled that there's such a strong Bay Area turnout here. We've got San Leandro in the house. We've got, a, we've got Contra Costa County. So glad to hear it. OK, and, and we're going to work out that badges thing later because that's one of those minor things, right, that, that you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out together. OK. Yeah, we're uh, hoping to use it for encouragement for our students and have them have like a little badge. Oh, definitely, definitely something. more more incentive, you know, positive reinforcement. Okay, thank you, Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay, a anyone else? And so, listen. Uh, think about your questions. I want I want to move on to the next thing because I have to do my my little uh, spiel about uh, the beta test. Okay, so uh, so the beta test. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to spend the next few weeks proofreading and fine tuning things. Uh, there's there's still more that I have to do, but basically, uh, if you saw my earlier scroll through the modules, that all 20 units are basically there. You know, I, I have to, I do have to proofread though. Uh, so I hope I can begin this uh, beta test with you, with you guys in, in April. I hope you're interested. You know, um, uh, but you know there are some uh, requirements. Uh, uh, but they're they're not set in stone. So you know, I, I always have an open mind, and I, I love enthusiastic teachers. But it would be great if you have experience using PTW one online, and, and even better if you have access to to Canvas because uh, uh, and and that your school is is part of the uh, the California Distance Learning Cooperative with OTAN. If not, uh, let me know, and we'll see what we can do. Okay. The reason why you know. I, I would like some PTW1 experiences that, that you can compare things and tell me if, if it's better or, or not or what we could do to improve. Uh, and then the Canvas thing, it's just like Susan's question. Uh, it'll free me to up to uh, just work on, uh, you know, polishing the, the exercises and, you know, you guys and not have to help you with Canvas, you know. So, and uh, I hope we can beta test it in a situation where you're actually using it with students. And it could be either in the classroom or through distance learning. Okay. And then in the process, you're going to provide me with feedback on the pros and cons. Basically, you know, what's working and, and what might not be working and how we can improve things. Okay. So right now I, I want to put uh, uh, I'm going to put a, a link to a form that I made that, that I would like those interested parties to fill out. Okay, I want to put that in the chat right now. And, uh, and you know, you can, oh, hold on, I, I just sent that uh, to, to Penny, and, and she's not here. So I, I just wish to everyone, does everyone see that, that Google Doc link? Yes. Uh, okay, so let me, let me uh, share my screen and switch to the form. Basically, uh, it's a simple form where you're gonna just you know describe, uh, you know yourself, your email, and so that I can have a way to contact you. Okay, your your position, the agency. Does your school use Canvas? You know, uh, if if yes, we could easily copy the course over to your Canvas uh, class. If not, we'll have to talk to uh, you know the 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 administrative team here at OTAN to see what we can do. Okay. Uh, and do you currently have a class that could participate in the beta test? It'd be great if you, if you, if you do. And if not, you know, 
uh, I'm not going to reject you automatically. You know, we can talk, okay? And if yes, please describe your class. Is it an in-person class, remote, hybrid, distance learning? Is it ESL, uh, you know, a supplement to a CTE? Okay, just, just let me know, okay? And briefly describe any previous experience using PTW, any experience using Canvas. And if you don't have any, don't worry about it, okay? I'm, I just want to get to know you and uh, so that we can form a better partnership. In, in this, okay? Any, any questions about that? Okay, and uh, so you don't have to fill that out right now. Uh, you can just make sure that you click on that link to the form and open it in your browser so that you can fill it out, you know, after the session ends. And and Debbie, do you have a link to the- uh, I to do, the presentation evaluation right. right there. So please fill that out as well. Yeah, and again, for both of those uh, items, you don't need to fill it out right away. You know, just make sure you click on them and launch your browser and you can fill it out later on today okay and uh let me just show you uh share my screen one last time okay this is uh i want to thank you guys for coming uh uh it, it was fun hearing myself talk <laughs> i really appreciate the questions and uh listen uh don't hesitate to contact me with any questions you might have okay this is my uh my email, pyoung at scoey.net. Okay. And uh, thank you. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm going to, uh, Debbie, uh, what, what's going to happen now? Are you going to leave and we have to close the room or can we hang out for a few minutes? Well, because we're a 60 minute and a 90 minute slot, we could hang out for a little bit before I get in trouble because they tell me I have to close it promptly, but, <laughs> you know, define promptly, you know. So if you need a minute or two, anybody to, to ask any questions, if you're thinking of being in the beta test and you want to ask Paul questions, please do. We'll give you maybe two more minutes. How's that sound? Yeah, so, uh, you know, set, fill out that form for me, okay? And uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to spend the rest of the next few weeks, you know, fine tuning things, proofreading, and I'll, I'll contact you within the next two weeks. And hopefully we can start, uh, you know, in, in April. And if we can and, and really test things out, maybe we'll we'll launch over the summer, you know, or uh, definitely by by fall. OK, uh, yes, Tom, question. Hi. Yeah, sorry. I missed the entire beginning of your presentation, but I'm interested in I was in another presentation that was also on Canvas or a Canvas module. And um, I'm interested, but I don't. Is there a way that I can look at your course to see? You know if it's the right level for my ESL students and well I, I what level are your students they're high beginning okay so this is like a level 1a and, and 1b so uh possibly, possibly. <laughs> yeah yeah um you can watch uh Debbie this this Debbie's making a recording and uh this recording will be available. You can watch it again and, and feel free to contact me. Okay. You, did you write down my email I did. address? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So watch the video. I, I click through every single exercise in unit one and you can, you can, you'll be able to see for yourself whether it's right for your class or not. Okay. Thank you. And I have a good feeling that it, it, it will be. Okay. Paul, uh, can they still get it on Moodle? It, it's still active on Moodle, but uh, I don't know if I will recommend it at this time because uh, they're 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 planning on taking it down at some point you know and making the full transition within the next year so i would hate for you to gear up you know learn moodle and then find out that you have six months left <laughs> to use it you know but i don't know maybe at, the better answer is to ask penny about it okay but the probably the ideal thing is, is to beta test it with me tom you have a class right now with students I do. Um, I, I just don't. Is it? Yeah, I, I'll need to ask more questions about this. Yeah, yeah, watch, part. watch, watch this video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jamie, Jamie has a question. Jamie? The question. Oh, I, I. Oh, sorry. Um, I just a asked it in the chat. Um, in terms of CASAS level ESL, um, CASAS scores. Do you have like a certain range that you think works best in this class? Uh. I, I don't. I'm sorry. That's but okay. Yeah, it's just it's just generally used for a uh, uh, beginning low students. One A, one B. Okay. 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 Awesome. Thank you. And I, I, you know what? Uh, there have been many studies uh, that have shown that uh, students who 
take a regular in-person class and do distance learning, uh, their cost as results are higher than uh, classroom only students and higher than distance learning only students. So that blended learning is, is, has really been effective, you know, okay? So keep, keep that in mind. Okay, it, more questions. So I asked one in the chat, are you gonna be, is somebody gonna be developing this course for the, the course two, the higher level, the course two? Two and three will, will be coming hopefully sometime next year. Uh, okay. Great. All right. Well, That's this all the questions anybody has? The videos will be available uh, once they're remediated, and that will depend on your evaluation. So please, please, please fill out the evaluation so that his video and his presentation gets remediated sooner than others, and then you'll have access to it. Otherwise, show your address again on the board, and then they can email you if they still have questions. Okay, let me show. Or put it in the chat would work. There you go. Okay, so here it is, uh, pyoung at scoey.net. Okay, and I'll put it in the chat as well. I want to thank everyone for coming. I, I had a lot of fun and uh, it was exciting to roll this out and uh, even more excited to be able to beta test with this with you uh, in April, okay?